Well, I'm gonna, not going to take your time for long. Uh, so, finding your way. I bet we hear that phrase quite often throughout all our lives. It is considered to be essential to find your way, although the concrete meaning of your way is quite blurred. Is that the path of least resistance? Or is it the thorny way full of obstacles that you should conquer? Maybe it's a roundabout, a sneaky way to something you've been following for some time. Well, many people mistake it for finding a way to a particular destination, thinking that destination matters more than a journey. And I was among that people when I was growing up, and as a teenager, I thought this way. So, growing up and getting to know the world, I started to plan what my future life would look like. Meaning that I would graduate from school, I would apply to university, I would be granted a budget placement in the Faculty of Social and Political Sciences. And otherwise my life is just pointless, you know. I would start studying, I would graduate with flying colors at the age of 21. Whoa, I would be that old when I'm going to graduate. And I would get a prestigious job somewhere, like let's say in London, although I never knew what I was going to, like, to be when I grow up. And when I came across that phrase, like, finding your way, I thought with a relief, whew, well, I found mine, nothing to worry about. And I'm going to be a specialist in international relations, I'm going to travel abroad and live in the center of London. That's it, that's so easy, you know, why make a fuss about it? So with such assumptions, full of strange oaths and modern instances, I just started my first year at the university, studying at the Faculty of Social and Political Sciences, so I made it. Half a year later, I realized that the process of studying didn't live up to my expectations. I started noticing that the precepts of professors were completely different from what I wanted to accomplish in my life. And this, this was the wrong way, and I was gaining pace and going downhill. So I was terrified. I, it actually felt that I just found the wrong way. And I was just going the opposite direction from what I wanted to be in my life. Provided that, I was honorably dismissed from the university, so I withdrew my documents after half a year of studying and I applied to the Institute of Foreign Languages. It just meant a slight change of plans. And I started studying at new institution, again thinking, okay, I found my way, here it is. It's all fun and exciting, it's my second home, I love this place, I love the teachers, I love everything about it. And I got so much free time, you know, because if you study for some time in one institution and when you transfer to the other, you get some subjects deleted like, from your um, curriculum. Basically, my curriculum was empty. I had time to travel. And I started slow going to Germany with my best friend, staying there for a week. And uh, accidentally, I ended up uh, visiting more than 20 countries in three continents in three years. That just happens. And every time I was going to a new country, I thought, that's my way. I'm going to find my way in that country. That's my country. That's going to be amazing. And yeah, it never happened that way. I'm a hitchhiker. So when, I, when a person has ever traveled by hitchhiking, they know that, uh, what it feels like. And they know that hitchhiking is not about destination. Hitchhiking is about the way. It's about flexibility, endurance, and stamina. It's about waiting a lot, and it's about having some luck. And when I started hitchhiking, I thought about it as about my life. So, I need to get to that particular place in the shortest amount of time possible, as fast as possible as I can. And at first, my traveling resembled a hasty commuter who desperately needs to get home, but the last bus has already left. And it took time to start to enjoy the most important thing, the way to destination. It actually took time to uh, learn how to communicate to drivers, to communicate to even those grumpy ones who didn't want to speak to me at all. 
it took time to feel at ease with myself along the way because when you're standing on the roadside, you have nobody to entertain you except for, your, for like yourself. And you should be able to be comfortable with yourself. It took time to find that not only direct roads lead to your destination. When I was hitchhiking in Rio, in, in, sorry, in Brazil, uh, I was on the way to Rio and I got a driver who didn't speak any English. And we had to communicate in a mixture of broken Spanish and Portuguese. That was hilarious. And due to this breach in conversation, I was unable to predict that I was going to be uh, in Rio after the darkness. So imagine Rio, one of uh, the cities in Latin America with the highest crime rate. Uh, I've never been to that city before, and I'm going to be there after the dark, not having a place to sleep. Being in that situation, like the dark, when the darkness caught me off guard, I had to say no to my original plan and figure out some new plan. And I finally got to Rio, but in the following day, because I stayed in a gas station and caught some sleep there and hitchhiked to Rio the following day. So basically, I'm sorry. I had other stories, and all those stories taught me that plans not usually turn out the way you want them to. I had to sleep on gas stations and railway stations in Italy because I failed to catch a car. I had to climb fences on the highway in Macedonia at night because I needed to find a safe place to sleep. I was walking kilometers in 50 degrees heat in Greece just because the driver forgot to let me out on a turn off. And I also sometimes I had to opt for some different sources of traveling like planes and trains because hitchhiking didn't work. And it's about failing. Failing is okay. I also happen to be a rafting instructor. So when I uh, think about finding a way, I think about map and a compass. So um, I imagine guidelines on the map and I imagine seeing obstacles on that map and then seeing those obstacles in the real life. So what looks like a small line uh, on a map is in fact a huge waterfall, which I am supposed to conquer with an inflatable boat and a bunch of people with oars. Can you imagine that? But rivers in our region are not uh, only, they do not only consist of waterfalls as many tourists assume. 90% of the time we spend just rowing steadily and stubbornly. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Two or three hours of monotonous action. For what? And again, the answer is not about the destination. It's quite nice to come ashore and build a camp finally drying your drenched clothes and having a snack or to finish your roots and enjoy the pleasures of civilization like toilet paper and toilet. But it's about the way again. It's about overcoming your fears and being ready to face challenges that come up your way. And no map can fully prepare you to what you are going to face. I've been going down the same rivers a numerous amount of times with different groups, but I've never had the same rafting trip in my five-year-long career. So what do all those stories have in common? They are definitely about some sort of ways that we go, have to go or swim through. Those ways involve some obstacles, and they are not about destinations, and sometimes they require a change of plans. From my perspective, that resembles life in a way. From our childhood, we've been told to find our way, but most of us end up going on a rafting trip. So those people um, are guided by an instructor. So this role is usually prescribed to some social institutions, family, uh, schools, job, and so on. 
those people follow the guidelines, they reach milestones, they grow older, they sometimes have all those exciting waterfalls, or not very exciting, you know, waterfalls can damage you. And in the end, they find their harbor and they relax. But some people are hitchhikers. And they opt for making their own way, they change plans and they rely on luck in some way. And sometimes they have no idea about their final destination. They only know their next step, as I did when I was going to Rio. They're ready to be flexible and follow plan B. And there is those two, okay. those two ways are just different. And there's no good or right, like good, right road between those two. So from the time being a teenager, I thought that I need to find my way, meaning I need to follow the first path. I need to graduate, get married, have kids, retire, die. The pattern we hear from everywhere. It's quite tricky to actually realize that I was on a rafting road, following the stream, guided by some instructors. Because from the beginning, our lives resemble rafting. We actually go through all those instructors who help us to, uh, to see the possibilities of this world. Our parents, our teachers, our peers. But as soon as we finish with socializing, we cannot rely on our former instructors anymore. And we cannot search for others. Because there are roads that diverge in front of us. And by making a choice which one to follow, we create our own way. We create our own way because all the other ways are already taken. The ways of famous stars and prominent politics, ways of your parents and ways of your friends, ways of your idols and influences. So look at me now. I'm ready to graduate from the Institution of Foreign Languages. I'm 23 years old, I've never imagined myself being that old, and I've never imagined me being on this spot delivering this TED talk. But only making choices brought me here. And I still don't know where I'm heading, because life is not about destination. Life is about making your own way in this highly unpredictable world. And I hope that you're going to make a good way for yourself. Thank you for your attention.